Um, we are seeing the price of foodstuffs has gone really high, you know, which has which now uh, occasioned the government putting in place a subsidy on unga, for instance. And for you who provides food for children, you know, how has that impacted your operations? I think, I mean, the, the issue of food security is such a big issue, and especially for us, uh, we're in the work of providing school meals to kids in public primary schools. And right now we're working with around 50,000 children. So we've seen our cost per meal go higher. So where basic ingredients like cooking oil, like rice, like beans have gone higher. And it means that it's harder for us to cook. It, it's harder for us to, we have to find money from outside to be able to distribute these meals. We, uh, the parents contribute a small ma amount of money, 15 shillings for the meals, and we can't increase that amount for parents because they're facing the challenges we're facing back at home. So we've seen an increase of about 50%, some items like rice, even 75% increase in cost during this period. And the effect is that less people are having access to nutritious meals. Uh, and you know, it's a big, big risk for Kenya, so that in case, you know, especially for children, not having access to nutritious meals. All right, and when you say um, it has affected you guys, do you have any, I mean, is it that, no, actually, let me put it this way. You say the parents do 15 shillings. Mm -hmm. What's the total cost? The total cost has been around... No, per plate. Per plate has been around 25. Right now, it's shot up to over 30 shillings because of the inflation. So is it that now we've got, you said they've got, we've got few, are you now feeding fewer students? Pupils, no, we're finding more money. <laughs> you know, we're looking for more money to subsidize because we can't go back to the parents and say, now you need to pay a bit more for this meal uh, because the challenge that we're having, the challenges the whole country is having is the same challenge that parents at home are having to feed their children. So we go back to donors like Dan and say, Dan, can you help sponsor more <laughs> children? Because it's a, we can't go back to the parents and say, you need to pay more money for these meals. Yeah. You don't have the, the luxury of passing it on to the end user no, in this no. case, like a yeah. business. And Prof, <clears throat> what are your thoughts around um, just the current situation in terms of the price of foodstuffs? Well, I, I think you know, that's a, a very complicated question. <laughs> <laughs> because you know, the price is a symptom of a much larger systemic failure. Uh, in, in the agricultural sector. Um, and I think we need to think about questions around access to land, for instance. Uh, you know, how much land is out there under production? Uh, and what you realize is that, you know, 78% of our productivity, agricultural productivity, comes out of farmlands that are below three acres of land, okay? Um, and if you look at our neighbors, Ethiopia, for instance, Uganda, they outpace us by between 400 and 700 kilograms uh, per hectare uh, in cereal production. Uh, if you look at our investments in, in, uh, in research and development, uh, especially in innovation and extension services that should support smallholder farmers especially, uh, those have collapsed for a very long time. Uh, government extension services have collapsed. Most of that is moving into private sector. We've got input subsidy programs that are not working, especially around distribution of fertilizer, that are extremely inefficient. And in most cases, farmers don't get the, the, uh, the inputs that they need on time to be able to plant uh, their food. Uh, so I think the, the overall neglect uh, of the agricultural sector did not start with President Kibaki. Um, it is a historical problem uh, that we haven't fixed for a very long time. The average age of the farmer in Kenya is uh, estimated about 60. Why aren't young people getting into agriculture? It's questions around access to land, access to capital, access to markets, the basic infrastructure that is needed to support production in that sector. <clears throat> so I think we need to consistently step back and ask the question, rather than deal with the symptoms of the problem, which is now the apparent food insecurity. But of course, you throw in climate change, you throw in land degradation and all of that, uh, it becomes very, uh, very tricky. But what, what you also need to realize is that uh, one third of Kenyans circulate between urban and rural areas. There's a lot of idle land in the villages. Uh, in fact, at my last count, uh, we realized that m more than half of the land that is arable and productive is actually not being utilized. All you need to, go, to do is to go back to your village and see how much land is, 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 is under production. And the constraints are around labor and around uh, technology and mechanization. Okay. Uh, because 
the, 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 the people who live in the field, our grandmothers and our grandparents, can't actually till the land. The younger people are out riding motorcycles.